Hi everybody, welcome to Board Game Inquisition. I'm Antoinette and I love giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for Euro game with a particularly unusual theme? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about. The cost. The cost is a Euro game about mining, milling, transporting and selling asbestos. On your turn, you'll choose a country for your operations and perform actions from the action tokens. These include things like obtaining subsidies to fund costs, placing port tokens to earn money when goods are shipped, placing railroads to make money from transporting goods, and of course, building asbestos mines and mills. But asbestos is a dangerous substance, and if you're going to work with it, it'll cost you more to work safely. Otherwise, you can choose to let your meeples expire and operate cheaply instead. The winner is the person with the most money after four rounds. Thing one, what's this game all about? So the cost is a financial game in which you're trying to earn money from the mining, milling and selling of asbestos. There are countries who are gonna offer you subsidies to come and set up shop in their area, but you can also sell your goods on the foreign market too. Now, the question is, what do you know about asbestos or its history? Now, the rule book gives us a little bit of a backstory, but um, here's kind of my shorthand version, which is, um, asbestos was a very lucrative thing to be you know, working with. However, it's incredibly dangerous and many, many people died. Many companies continue to make it regardless of how many people died. Um, and this isn't an old story either. This is happening up until like, you know, the last decade or so. Um, so you can see the theme here is a really serious one. Um, and it's an unusual one, I think, to have in a board game. If anything, it's slightly unsettling. So how this works is that in the game you are dealing with asbestos and you can either choose to do it safely and pay more money to do so or you can do it unsafely and let your workers die. So really the game's offering you this kind of moral dilemma. Um, what bothered me a little bit is the fact that the game itself doesn't really have that many sanctions for you know mining and milling unsafely. Um, what does happen is if you allow five of your, of your workers to die, um, the country will shut down and stop dealing with you so you can't sell any more asbestos. Um, but that takes up until the fifth worker for any kind of sanctions to be imposed. Um, and maybe this is reflecting real life, um, but I'm not sure how fun it is to go through real life. Um, if anything, I think the game wants to put the moral imposition on you as the player and not on the mechanics themselves. Because the, the answer here is if you want to be efficient, you, you probably have to let people die. Um, and rather the game just puts this weight around your neck of guilt if you're trying to be good at the puzzle itself. Um, overall, I think the theme is a really interesting one, but rather unsettling. And I think that's because it's trying to reflect real life. Normally when you play games that are based on real world events, the interesting part of it is that maybe you could change things, you could do things differently, um, and you participate in it. You don't just sit back and watch it all go by in horror. Um, here it's up to you as the player to decide, well, you know, do I want to kill meeples or not, despite it not having a really major effect on the game. Um, now, similar games to the cost. It's got some very familiar mechanics, but I think the way they're put together is rather unique. I couldn't think of anything directly to compare this game to. Thing two, what types of actions are you going to be doing on your turn? Well, for me, this is the kind of game where you set everything up and then you watch it run to rake in a ton of cash. So at the start of your turn, you're gonna be deciding which country you wanna work with this round, and then you'll perform up to three actions. So these are things like placing out a port token so that whenever you use the port, you'll gain a victory point. You can set out train tracks, so whenever you use those, you'll get a victory point, and also your opponents too, which is a nice touch. Um, and also you can decide to build your asbestos mills and your asbestos mines. So normally how a turn kind of goes is that you will mine your asbestos um, and it's up to you to choose to be safe or not safe. Um, then you'll transport it, hopefully using your railroads, your asbestos mill, um, and there you'll mill it, um, hopefully safely or unsafely, um, into a kind of refined item. And then you can choose to ship it out to different markets or to other countries, or sometimes you can sell it in the country itself. Um, and that's kind of the system that you have going here. 
Um, the really, really cool thing about this game is that you can use each other's buildings and kind of industries. So you can force people to have to transport their goods along your railroad tracks, or you can use their asbestos mines before they get a chance to. Um, and there's lots of like hidden interactions here that I think are really, really interesting. So for example, you could go and set up an asbestos mine in someone else's country where they have kind of the majority of their industry and then just let workers die so the country gets shut down and they lose out on everything they've set up so far. Um, and this is just some of the subtleties I've come across. I really enjoy the interactivity here. I think it's very, very well done because it doesn't feel mean, but rather inevitable because this is a game about, well, you know, making the most money. Um, of course, I have to talk about the fact that the meeple dying mechanic. Um, it's an un it's a it's a it's a strange one to be fair. I dislike that there aren't more sanctions in the game for allowing it to happen. If anything, it's encouraged. So, for instance, the player who goes first each round is the person who has killed the most meeples, proving that by killing meeples you are in fact getting ahead and yes countries shut down because of the number of deaths but it takes them such a long time to do so and in the meantime it, it there's no sanctions whatsoever it just simply feels like I've burnt this ground I need to move on to a new fresh pasture um, by the end of it and that's something you as a player are going to decide just how comfortable you are engaging with. Um, overall, I actually I really think this is such a fun pick up and deliver game. It's very well designed and very well put together. And there's so many intricacies I think I still have yet to explore um, and ways to play it with others. I've only been able to play it two player. I can only imagine how great it would be with more. Um, but overall, mechanics wise, this is a really, really strong game. I'm just not sure the whole dying meeple thing really adds much to it, at least for me. Thing three on the table. So despite the cost looking kind of abstract when it's set up, I really appreciate all the pops of color it's got going on. And then you look at things like your player boards, complete with miniature coffins, and it's all very interesting and intriguing to be fair. Um, now set up and put away for this is fairly handy. There's a number of tokens, but it still kind of feels all tidy and easy to do. And I really appreciated the size of the game boards and your own player boards. They fit very tidily on the table. Now for two of us to play, it takes just over an hour and we thought the rule book was really, really good. Um, you also get some player aids and be warned that on the mining and milling asbestos section, it doesn't mention that you get to put out a dice with the pips equal to the number of workers you've used for the action. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, and finally, replayability. I think there's a lot here um, because the countries um, you play with are different each time and they all have their own special abilities and different bonuses they might give you. And not only that, you're filling out a map. So of course that's different as well. Lots of variety to be had here. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, from the box art alone, I was kind of interested. I think there's something very curious about it. Um, but the cost definitely looks like a serious game. And this trend carries on when you open up the box and see all of the pieces. There's a level of sternness there. And I think it's to do actually with the lack of art. There isn't much in the game itself. So it makes it kind of stark. Now, there is a lot of iconography and it's done incredibly well. And I appreciate all the splashes of color that are in there to break up this whole, you know, blocks of gray. Um, component quality here is very, very good. It's kind of your standard Euro games fair with chunky cardboard, wooden meeples and wooden dice. Now, there's not a lot of luxury in the box and I'm not sure how appealing as a whole this package is, but it's one that's certainly intriguing. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, initially when I heard about the cost, I was pretty intrigued because A, I, I love a good heavy Euro game and B, it had this unusual kind of theme. And if anything, I love a challenge and I was really excited to try and tackle this one. So when we sat down initially to read the rule book and learn how to play, I very quickly declared that I would not be killing any of my meeples. After all, who wants to be that kind of person? Um, and it turned out it was that moral compass that really hung me as we played because I watched my opponent have more money than me um, and go ahead of me because they didn't have to pay their workers and they were just killing them left, right and centre. Um, and then I wondered, could I get around this moral issue if I just transported the asbestos that everyone else made? Because I hadn't killed people, I was just supporting people who had killed people. So that didn't really work out either. And then I was hopeful that the countries themselves would shut down after this number of atrocities, right? Because the game can end early if you shut down all the countries. But that didn't happen either. There didn't seem to be any consequences for not killing your meeples. Um, if anything, you, you get to go first in the round if you've killed the most. 
The truth is, is that this is an economic game where everything has a value and a cost, lives included. And all this moral wrangling of what's right and what's wrong is really left up to you as the player because the game just seems to want to forward industry and allow that to flourish, having very few sanctions for those who work unsafely or who carry out dangerous practices. And is this reflecting real life? Absolutely. However, having a game reflect real life uncomfortable events does in fact make the game feel a bit, well, uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure there's a great teaching tool here, but I'm not sure how much fun it adds to the game. Um, there's so many great things going on in here that I really enjoyed, kind of the pick up and deliver aspect, the interactivity aspect. Um, there's a really solid game in here, but the moral wrangling of whether I was a good person or a bad person really didn't add to how much fun this game was to play. And there is the issue too of I'm playing to win, where all those issues of safety and morals get abstracted into money just so you can win. I really enjoyed playing the cost, but the constant bringing up of moral issues was just a little bit exhausting for me. And I understand that games tackle difficult things sometimes. I actually think it's really important, but there has to be enough of a game behind the issue to make it interesting enough to explore in the first place. And there's absolutely tons and tons of game here if you don't mind paying the cost. Do I think you should have the cost in your collection? Well, if you're interested in tackling real world issues through a board game with some really interactive gameplay and tough choices to make, then you're absolutely gonna love this. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Go like and subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about the cost, why not ask me in the comment box below? I'll do my best to answer them. And tune in again for some more hopefully shorter and informative board game reviews.